little bit about special effects in jazz music today, especially uh, regarding the trumpet. As a jazz trumpet player, you'll need to be familiar with a variety of special effects that are commonly used in jazz language. You'll find these effects written in big band charts, but they can also be useful when employed in improvised solos. Think of these effects like spices on a spice rack. A really great chef knows when to use a particular spice and how much of it to use, whether they're reading a recipe or they're making a recipe up on their own. Now uh, let's explore some of the effects that are most commonly used in jazz. One common effect used in jazz is referred to as the shake. You'll find it a lot in big band charts. Now two ways you can do this shake. One is by using the hand and the other is by using the lip, doing a lip trail. This is the hand version. So if we do that, it gets, you get a bit wider shake and uh, it sounds a little bit more rough around the edges. But I can do that same, same shake with my, my lips, just doing a lip trill. Now you see it sounds a little bit more refined, it's a little bit tighter. And sometimes this is up to the preference of the player. In fact, uh, sometimes I'll see a sh shake written and if it's easier to do a lip trill, I'll do the lip trill. If it sounds better to do the shake, I'll do the shake. And sometimes when you do the shake, it'll call for a really wide shake. Something like this. You'll find that commonly used uh, in Latin music and sometimes guys will go crazy with it. They'll even shake a whole octave. It gets really, really, really cool. Another effect that we use quite a bit in jazz is known as the fall or drop. Sometimes that can be uh, really uh, brought out nicely by using a half valve effect um, at, at the drop of the note. So you play the note normal, you hit it straight on, say we're hitting a high C on the trumpet. Well, I'll just hit that note, but then I'll kind of put down the valves in a way that the sound doesn't break, but it continues to drop down in a uniform manner. And that's known as a fall. Another way to do a fall, instead of using the half valves to get that uniform fall, you can also do something that's a little bit more messy, just by moving the valves in a random succession like that. Now the opposite effect of a fall would be uh, a glissando, a glissando up, also known sometimes as a squeeze. Uh, these, these, this terminology can change from, from player to player, from textbook to textbook. Um, you can basically call it whatever you want, but these are, are referred to as squeezes or glissandos. So instead of falling from the note, what we'll do th this time is I'll start on a pitch, and you can hear this commonly in, in uh, the 1920s recordings of Louis Armstrong playing with a hot five and hot seven. Um, and I'll, I'll use the half valves and I'll gliss up. Another famous excerpt actually from uh, Rhapsody in Blue, you can hear the clarinet player doing this, this large glissando up at the very beginning of the piece. It sounds something like this. And that can be very effective, especially uh, on the break of a solo uh, or in a, a number of different ways. Um, another way to do that too is uh, to do it a bit quicker, but at the end of a phrase. So if you're doing, say, uh, playing a nice little jazz line, and then at the end, uh, you'll see the, the indication for a squeeze. It's kind of like do doing a glissando, but it's, it happens a lot quicker. And that's called a squeeze. You just squeeze it up and let it do its thing. Another technique or uh, effect that you can use quite a bit um, you'll see it written into the music, V-I-B, uh, which actually just stands for vibrato. And sometimes you'll see a wavy line as well. Um, this is usually when the music is calling for a little bit extra vibrato than, than what a trumpet player might normally use. In, in fact, especially if you're playing mariachi music, you might, uh, you might use this technique quite a bit to get that mariachi vibrato. And it's, it's usually done with the hand. Now you can make this very fast, you can make it slow, it all depends on the speed that you use. You can start slow, you can go faster and... Now uh, a lot of old time players like Harry James, uh, they would use hand vibrato all the time. Um, and a lot of players 
actually they use lip vibrato or jaw vibrato, which is done more by changing the jaw position slightly. So it's a, it's a subtle difference actually. Um, I don't use a lot of hand vibrato, but every now and then when I'm reading music and it does call for the hand vibrato, uh, sometimes uh, you, you just need to ham it up. It's another technique we use in jazz. Another technique is the flutter tongue. Um, this is simply just going if you flutter your tongue inside your mouth. Now you do that while you're playing and then that translates to this. Now the flutter tongue is often used in conjunction with something else like say um, a plunger mute. All I'm doing is just going and then using the mute for the other part of that effect. But the flutter itself is something that some people struggle with. They don't know quite how to do it. Um, if you're one of those people that doesn't know how to flutter just naturally, one way you can work on it is by simply putting the tongue to the, the roof of your mouth where the roof of your mouth meets your, your upper teeth. Put, place it right there. In fact, if this is your teeth and this is the roof of your mouth, you're going to place the tongue right there, the tip of the tongue, and then you're going to force the air to go out while holding the tongue there and that'll create the flutter. It'll move the tongue very rapidly, and what you're hearing there is actually the tongue just doing that. It's articulating by force of the air blowing through it. Now, if you can't do the flutter, a good alternative to the flutter is doing something we call growling. Now, um, growling is just what you would uh, imagine it to be. It's going but doing it into your trumpet. So. Let's check that out. Now if we uh, again use a plunger mute and, and use that growl. Now let's, comp let's compare the growl to the flutter real quick. Here's the flutter. And here's the growl. So each one of them creates kind of a vocal quality, and uh, especially it's great if you're using it with a mute. Um, doesn't have to be used in conjunction with a plunger, but they definitely work really well together. Um, another thing you can do with the growl, uh, you can do something called multiphonics. It's kind of related to the growl, because what you're doing essentially when you growl is you're singing a note, but you're not really singing any particular note. You're kind of just randomly creating a kind of sound. But now if you focus that sound into a particular note, let's see if I can go. Now I'm going to try and sing that same note. Now you can't really hear it because they're blending in together. But if I was to, say, play a lower note on my trumpet and still sing that same note. doesn't work so well on the trumpet, but it works really well on the trombone. In fact, if I was to play a super low note on a trumpet, now you can actually hear how my voice is changing pitch, but the trumpet is staying on that same low note. So for all you brass players out there, you know, especially trombones and uh, tubas, experiment a little bit with multiphonics. Um, there's a great recording out there. Uh, Matt Schulman has a recording where he does really, really cool multiphonic stuff with the trumpet. He's playing in the pedal register, but singing those other lines. Uh, so that's a great effect as well, kind of related to the growl. So another effect that we use uh, in jazz, especially when improvising, uh, it's called blocked tonguing or half tonguing. Um, it, players use it to, to make a ghosting effect. A ghosting effect is when you you play certain notes, but then you ghost other notes or kind of play them so that they're almost barely there. Someone who was a master of this was Clifford Brown. He used this effect a lot in his solos. It sounds something like this. And what I'm doing there 
is I'm tonguing some of the notes, da, da, and then others, I'm using my tongue to block the air. So I'm going, da, da, if you make an L sound, and then da, and then L, that L is actually, if you push it into the front of your teeth, push it into the front of your mouth, you'll find that it blocks the air, so just a little bit of air can come out. Um, here, let me, I'll do the da, the articulation, and then I'll do the L. And if you play that by itself, it, you kind of sound like a beginner trumpeter. Like you can't quite get the sound out. But then the trick is to alternate between the two of those. And then you can create uh, patterns with it. Da 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 You can do this on the saxophone too. I actually play a little tenor sax myself. And the way to do that on the reed instruments, it's a little bit different. But what you do is you block half of the, uh, half of the, the opening of the mouthpiece with your tongue instead of uh, letting the full amount of air go through. It kind of creates this, this half tongue effect. So that's uh, block tonguing, half tonguing, uh, ghost tonguing, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a great effect.